The American Trail. The American Trail. Blazed in blood. Defended in blood. Chapter 7. The Magic Wire. Washington, D.C., the night of March 2nd, 1844. The shabby figure moves away from the shadows of the Senate building. It doesn't matter much who he is, some crackpot, the would-be inventor. You see all kinds in Washington. Cab? You, you want a cab, mister? Thank you, no. Oh, what? Well, if it ain't the professor. Well, you're, not, you're not sociable, professor. Say, is it right you want the Congress to give you $30,000 to approve your invention works? <laughs> Don't tell me they're not going to give you the money. Thick-headed oaf. A man to be laughed at. He's a big joke around Washington. Morse. Professor Samuel Finley Brees Morse invented something he calls the telegraph. And nobody seems to care. Senators, congressmen, 12 years of talking to them. They know my telegraph works. They've seen it work from one room to another. Why won't they believe it'll work over a long distance? Why won't they let me have the money to prove it? It's for the country's benefit. Well, if he didn't get the money appropriated tonight, he may as well give up. Congress adjourns tonight. So the man's come home. Or what he's called home for several months. A big, white, colonial-type house belongs to a government official who went to school with Morse. Commissioner of Patents, Ellsworth. Morse has been a house guest for several months. The big square foyer, the winding staircase, rich carpet, good painting. The professor walks upstairs. His room is on the second floor. Well, it's a room, four walls, washstand, writing desk, everything in very good taste. Besides, a man has to live somewhere, a cheap lodging house, a park bench, or the hospitality of a friend. Call it charity. The professor takes off his coat sits down on the edge of the bed. Fifty-three years old. And a failure. A lifetime of failure. Yes? It's me, Professor. Oh, uh, just a moment. Let me put a jacket on. Annie Ellsworth. Daughter of the commissioner. Young. Beautiful. Sorry I kept you waiting. I waited up. I heard you come in. Did Congress... Oh, Samuel. You... You haven't had any food, have you? Oh. There's a tray of sandwiches in the parlor. You must eat. The parlor is cozy enough. Nice fire burning... Silver coffee pot, chicken sandwiches. But the man just sits there brooding, staring into the fire. The girl watches him. I, I was thinking of 30 years ago, long, long before you were born. I was just out of Yale. I was going to become immortal as an artist. I went to London to study. I know. I, I did well. I, I won a gold medal. I had a future once. What happened to it? The telegraph is your future. It must be. You mustn't give it up. Annie. Annie, life is so unreal just now. I've been married. 
I lost my wife. I have grown-up children. My oldest daughter is your age. Unreal. All of it. Unreal. The girl says goodnight. The man is alone. Restless. The long years of work gone for nothing. A dream, an ambition, dissolved into futility. Well, it's no use thinking of sleep. May as well go out. Out into the cold, hostile Washington night and just walk. It doesn't matter how far. Raining now, cold and raw. The man shivers, but doesn't care. Cobblestone Street. A few years ago, there'd been only muddy lanes. A light in one window of a house. Gone now. Only darkness. Darkness and the icy rain. Something ahead. Pale, misty against the night. Oh. A little white colonial church. The soft gloom. So restful. One is able to sit there and think. Simple as that. A lot of money. An end to all financial worry. He could have gone back to his painting. A rich man, able to paint at leisure. But now what? He hasn't a penny in the world. And he has a family of children to support. I, I don't know what to do. Or where to turn. <laughs> dozed off. He's awake now. I, I feel better. Much better. He walks home again. Bitterness gone. Resentment, despair, all gone. His mind relaxed, peaceful. Why hadn't he come to this before? Good morning. I begged Father to let me tell you. To tell me? Samuel, you're getting the money. What? The very what? last thing they did, the last bill they passed before adjourning last night. Samuel, they voted you the money, $30,000, right after you left there. I must... I must let Alfred know. Alfred Dale, former art student at New York University where Professor Morse once taught. Dale, who had encouraged and helped Morse finish the invention... Dale, who must now hasten to Washington. Alfred, we must get to work. A shallow trench to be dug from Washington to Baltimore, a converted plow to dig it. Then, the laying of the wire. Testing, testing, testing. As each length of cable is buried in the trench, the signal must be tested. How far does it carry? The signal's not getting through. There's something wrong. Dread of failure. This man who has known little else all his life. Ask Mr. Vale to come here. Stop work. This, this trench is no good to us. We can't bury the wire. It won't work. So the telegraph wire has to be left in the open. Strung up on poles. All the way from Washington to Baltimore, the wire must be carried overhead. Again, testing. Testing, testing. The telegraph instrument is in a tent beside the road. Morse has become nervous these days. About a mile along the road, Alfred Vale should be receiving a test signal. Answer! Answer! The signal's not getting through. If he fails, the man will be a laughing stock. Every day, a crisis. The certainty of failure. Night and day without rest, without mercy to himself or those about him. A problem is met, overcome. Another takes its place. 
mile upon mile of wire, stretching from Washington toward Baltimore. The big day has come. A room in the Supreme Court building. Government officials, friends, Commissioner Ellsworth, his daughter, Annie. All there to see the telegraph tested over a distance of 30 miles. This is it. Samuel. Don't worry. Can anything go wrong? No, no. Nothing can go wrong. Nothing. Just... Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Alfred Vale is in Baltimore, waiting to receive the message. I'm going to send it. Having received it, he will send the same message back to this room. Your attention, please. Morse starting to tap out the message. At this very moment, Alfred Vale is receiving the message. In a matter of seconds now, he will send it back to us. Well, Mr. Moore, they're waiting, looking at you. Patience! In heaven's name, a moment of patience! There it is! (laughs) There it is! Gentlemen, gentlemen, this... This instrument is... Is now recording in code the message that... Albert Vale is sending from Baltimore. (laughs) Oh, it's working. Hasn't Morse been saying it does for 12 long years? The government official, familiar with the code, translates the message as it comes in. He seems unable to realize the enormity of the moment. Annie Ellsworth takes the slip of paper from his hand. Here it is. The message. What hath God wrought? What hath God wrought? A message soon to be heard around the entire world as a new era of rapid communications began. grew small, continents a few seconds apart. No longer was it necessary for an urgent message to take uncertain weeks by boat or stagecoach. Men built a telegraph cable across the American continent, across the Atlantic, around the globe. A magic wire that linked the world. This has been the seventh chapter in the story of the American nation brought to you by the Ladies' Auxiliary to the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Next week, another story to make you proud of this great country of ours as we follow The American Trail. Thank you.